Hi everyone, it's Nat here. Hope you're doing well. I am on with a fun side project. I've got a big project I'm in the middle of which I really should be doing. But I'm always watching videos and looking at pictures and getting really inspired by other people. And then usually I save the videos or the pictures to do later and I have a massive pile of pins on Pinterest, videos on YouTube and saved projects on Facebook which I want to get to one day. So the other day I watched a video by the lovely Crafty Dork and it got me really inspired and she said that she was inspired by Nina Rabina so I went and checked out her video and that was it. I could not stop thinking about it for a whole day and I was out watching TV and I thought why am I watching TV when I could be sitting here getting started on this little side project. So that's what I want to show you today. Um, so a massive thank you to Crafty Dork for bringing it to my attention and Nina Ribena for the awesome idea. A lot of people do these, Daphne diary, Daphne's diary journals. Um, and it's something I've sort of steered clear from because usually if everyone's doing it, I won't do it <laughs> because, you know, there's enough videos on it. <laughs> but this one just looked like a load of fun and something really cool that I can sit out at night and play with um, while I'm watching TV and I don't need all the bits and pieces I have in the craft room to be able to do it. So... Um, yeah, and I just want to have fun with my crafting at the moment. I like having a few different sides and types of project on the go at once so that, um, you know, you get a bit bored and burnt out, I think, if you're just doing the same big project non-stop. So it's nice to stop and have a bit of a breather in between. So, um, what Jeanette and Nina have done is made little fun journals. Now they're, um, Nina's calling it a journal. I'll probably be terming it a glue book because basically I'll be cutting out pieces from magazines and sticking them in there. So to me, it's sort of like a glue book. So it'll be a Daphne Diary glue book. And what they've done is created this little journal or book using uh, mostly pages from Daphne Diary. And then they're embellishing it um, and collaging it with mostly um, bits cut out from the Daphne's diaries, which is a whole heap of fun because there's always a bit of a um, issue with, you know, not being able to sell things if you put bits of Daphne's diaries in there and all that sort of stuff. I'm not really sure of the copyright laws there. I would have to go to them and ask them and I can't be bothered if things are like that, then I'll just use them for my personal journal. But um, I've been hoarding my Daphne's diaries because I'm too worried about mixing up the stuff in journals that I sell and stuff. So I thought this is a great project because we're using mainly the Daphne's diary stuff. I can just keep it all together and just use it in this one personal project. So what I have here is my collection of Daphne's diaries. Now, a couple of years ago when um, I was in a certain um, Facebook group, everyone was raving about them, so I did go out and buy one or two. Then after that, I thought, oh, I don't know, because I just they just sat on my bookshelf, so I didn't buy any more new. But since then, I've found a pile of them in the second-hand shop for 50 cents or a dollar each. Um, why not buy them at that price, I thought. <laughs> so that's where I've got most of these from. Um, now, they are ripped to bits because I have found some pages for this project in them and I've also given a few pages away and pulled out a few pages that I want in other projects. I also found at the bookshop the other day this Breathe magazine which has some beautiful bits and pieces in it too, which I may use. And I have a Frankie magazine here which had a few nice bits as well, so... I will use bits and pieces of them. And then my, yeah, whole pile of Daphne's diaries. So I'll just put them to the side for now. So I have got most of my pages organised, um, but I do want to add a couple of plain pages as well. So I've just found some bits that I had in my scrap paper pile to add. So I will show you where I am up to with it all. But I thought I would come on and share a bit of my progress as I go. So I found this cover. Now I know that um, Nina Ibina just used 
the Daphne Diary covers, um, I think she used a back and front cover, um, the front cover for the outside cover and the back cover, I think, for the inside cover. And then in between, she sandwiched in between those um, a piece of cardstock. She stuck them together and then sewed around them. And that was her cover, a nice and sturdy one. Can't remember, but I think Jeanette might have done something similar. I'll have to check her video again. But um, as you all know, I have an excess of books and I have harvested a lot of books and kept covers that appealed to me. So I sort of feel bad if I don't utilise <laughs> book covers and they're just so nice and sturdy. So I found this beautiful white one and it fits the pages quite nicely. It is a little big, but that doesn't bother me. It's my own journal. And in some ways being a bit high is good because I'll probably use some eyelets and elastic. So um, that'll hold better, I think, being a bit longer. So that is the plan to use that. So what I have got ready so far is I did cut the front and back cover. And well, and here's the front cover and that's what I was going to use. So I was going to put that there and then this on the back. But it sort of cut the squirrel's feet off and it's got all this writing on it and that. So I turned it over and it was like this. And I absolutely adore that. So that is going to be my cover piece. And this is going to be on the back with um, where it says this Daphne's diary belongs to. I think that's really nice. So I've got that. I've got a bit of lace here that might go underneath those pieces. Now, next I have the back cover of the Daphne Starry and they're going to be my inside cover pieces, but I'll have to add some washi tape or paper down on the bottom or up the top to make them fit right. So they will probably go in like that. And then so far I have made two signatures. So these are just the Daphne Diaries pages mainly. I have just cut the rough edges off. I haven't been fussy, they're crooked and everything and I don't care. I've added some scrap bits of coloured paper. And I've added one or two pages from the, I think these smaller pieces would be from either the Breathe or the Frankie magazine. So that's what I've got so far. So now I just want to add a few of the blank pages to these signatures. Now I made that a middle page, but I'm still trying with the idea of finding a different middle page. I love all of this. That's why I kept it together. But I could cut it out and use it to decorate one of the other pages um, and put a different page in here. So the beauty of it is, though, um, like Nina has done and Jeanette, um, they've used, they've tied it in with your elastic so you can take pages in and out so you can move them around. So um, I think Nina did one signature. I think Jeanette did two. I could have done about five or something. I just could have kept going forever, but I would have need a, needed a lot thicker book cover so I can always do more in the future. But yeah, I thought it'd be so much fun just playing with this while I'm sitting out in the lounge. So this is my second signature so far, but beautiful colours. center page there so they're quite small but as we stick things in we are going to bulk it out so I thought I'll add a few of these planar pages and then that will probably do us as I said there's a lot of room there but that allows for me to stick lots of stuff in there so I don't want to get too carried away I don't like especially with these hard book covers I don't like them being alligator mouse too much, just a personal preference of mine. So the first thing I want to do today is I've got to put those book pages in, but before I do that, the cover, I've been thinking and thinking what I'm going to do with this. It's touched by greatness. 
I was just going to cover this whole lot, but then I thought, well, that might make me feel good if every time I pick it up, I read that it says touched by greatness. So as a bit of a joke, I might actually leave that there. Um, but I'm wondering how I can go about covering over these other little bits of writing. So what I might do is just try a bit of gesso. As I said, I don't want, it doesn't need to be perfect or anything. It is just my scrappy journal. And it's a good way of uh, trying out things and seeing what works and what doesn't. Um, I'm a bit of a scientist like that. I just like trying it out and seeing what happens rather than finding the right way to do something first up. And a lot of the time that doesn't end well. So yes, I'm just, I might just grab a bit of the gesso that's on the lid. Might need a few coats here, but especially if I put it on that lightly. Um, I probably should have wet my brush too because it's very um, stiff, this one. I probably used glue with it. I think this will work though with a few coats. It's slightly embossed though, so I'll probably still see that a bit, but that doesn't matter. So I'm going to let that coat dry, which does not take long with gesso, but I'll just let it dry for the moment. And then we'll do another coat after. Okay, so next we might get one or two of these plain pieces of paper into us each signature. I've got this lined piece, which I might use. These pieces, which again will be a bit short. What I might do is fold them like that. And get one short side and one longer side. I'll do that with two of them. One more lined piece from somewhere just to make it even. Okay, I've got these long bits here. I'll just use one of them and fold it. It'll be a bit different of a fold than that one, but it'll do. So with this one, we can just fold it. How wide are our signatures? I'll just chop this down. And then these will need a bit of chopping because they're a bit long. Or will they? They might not actually. Though do we want them that long? I think I'll chop these ones down a bit and leave these full length. This one does need that end piece chopped off. So that should be right. So I'm not even going to worry if they're crooked or whatever. I don't want to neaten them up if they bother me. Doesn't look too bad. those three pieces in one and these three pieces in another signature. Now I'm thinking we might be right to do that 
do a second coat on this. I might even end up sticking a bit of lace over the top, but it will still um, be a great improvement to have that gesso on to take the glare of the gold away. So we'll do our second coat now and that can dry while we put these pages in. I think I'll take this chunk of goop off. a good dry now. Now put these pages in. So I'll just put that signature to the side and we'll work on this one. Figuring out which way things look pleasing to me. I think that'll do. So that's all of the pages for that signature. And we'll do the same for this one. Though that could do with breaking up too. I think we'll be covering that up because that is too much for me. Okay, so that was easy. So I think that'll do for pages. All right, now I know that we have a piece in here which is just a little too long for my liking. So I'm just gonna cut that down just a little bit. It's a bit crooked too, but I will. That should fit a bit better now. ruler and my knife. Make sure that they're all together nicely. Every time I do that, it looks really crooked and I'm not sure why. just got to get our signatures into our book and do the cover. Maybe that's what we'll start doing is the front and back cover while this um, gesso dries a bit more. So let's find the pieces, which were these two. Now this has a really big crease down the bottom, but because it's for me, I don't mind. And if it bothers me too much, I can just cover it up with something. So that's gonna go on there. And I 
I've got lots of scraps of this lace. Maybe I could put some of this on top of the bottom. So we need something just to dangle down a bit, I think. Maybe we could do it something like that and I'll cut this down a little bit, which I'll do right now I'm thinking of it. Cut it along here. It's just some curtain lace that I got from an op shop. It was already cut into a thousand pieces. I have piles of it. But gee, it's been handy. See, that can sit there and I can just trim down the bottom once it's stuck on. So I think that will work. Now, this would look awesome sewed around with white stitching. Um, but I'm not going to do that <laughs> because I am doing this other big project which takes brown um, cotton and I can't be bothered taking it out and putting it back in again. Now I'm just debating whether I want to put some of this around the spine before I... So, well, that bit's going to go down there anyway. And then it's, do I want bits coming over there or underneath there? Probably underneath there. So we might want to cover the spine before we stick that on if we're going to put any lace on. We're going to do eyelets too, so I have to be mindful of that. I might go through there, all right. That bit fits quite nicely there, actually. I might just find a few scrappy bits like that to put over where that other writing is. Still a little bit damp, but we might get away with it. So I might use my Kmart fabric glue for this. So the gesso's helped a lot. If it wasn't for that, you would see the gold through the lace. So that's worked great. And I've still got my Touched by Greatness to make me feel good every time I touch the book. <laughs> got a dream, don't you? to the side. Grab my cover. I'm not even going to bother inking or anything. I just want to leave it a couple of millimetres off the edges so we can still see a bit of the white from the book cover because I like that. Got a lace piece to put down here.
So now I can probably put the back cover piece on, which I was going to put that way. Hmm. Though the flowers go better that way. This way. Now with this piece too, I might end up collaging something up here if I find something that I like the looks of. So we'll do the same with that, stick it up the top a bit and then I'll figure out whether I want to put more lace, which I might because I'm lazy and that's a quick and easy option. It's not coming out too easy. I think it might be a bottle that I put all my dribs and drabs in from all my nearly empty bottles. And that's why it's drying really quick and it's very thick. Need to go get me some more. I should save up a bit of money and maybe do a bulk buy of it from actual Helmars. something like that. So I'll just trim a bit off. It's meant to go that way there unfortunately. Not that it really matters. Now I've got a little bit on this piece which can just go there. Now we'll trim down this, the edges on here first. Should be dry enough but it looks like I might need to stick a bit more glue in a few spots. Now, there are some bits that could do with a bit more glue. So I could probably just push that down because the glue's still wet. It does take ages to dry this Kmart glue. Works well though, because you can't see it very much at all underneath, which is why I like using it for the fabrics and the laces. I think that will do. Otherwise, I will go around um, and fix up these little lifty bits another time. You don't need to watch me do that. I'm sure you know how. So that's our back cover. That's our touched by greatness. <laughs> and that's the front cover. That'll give me a laugh every time I read it, though. 
Um, so that looks beautiful. So better lid my glue before I do anything else. Now we want to get our signatures in. Um, so I have my crocodile, and I did find some white eyelets here, which I'm hoping they're thick enough to go through that, but I'm debating whether I should, um, I might reinforce that with just a little bit of chipboard. And this bit's quite sturdy. Yeah, that's a great length as well, so we'll use that. So we want it about the same width as this brown, whatever brown stuff they've got in there, I think. Let me just shut this. Yeah, I think that will work best. Which is about two and a half centimetres, just less than two and a half centimetres. So 2.4. Measure, measure that. Probably use some fabric over the top of that. I think we're gonna put that one on that side and that one on that side. I could stick this over the top of the fabric or you can have the fabric over the top of this. It's always the dumb. I think I'll put the fabric down now. But it's white enough, I think. Yeah, that'll do nicely. So we'll use some of that. I'll just leave it the width that it is too. So we'll stick our fabric onto the backboard here. And I will use my helmets for this. I just trust it strength-wise a bit more. And I won't have to wait half an hour for it to dry. Just you've got to get quite a light layer of it when you're when you don't want it to seep through the fabric and not press down fully to begin with so it doesn't seep through. So let's try and center this, which is almost an impossibility for me. It's not too bad though. There we go. Doesn't look like it's coming through too much. Now I just want to double check that it's going to look all right. If we stick this over the top. Yeah, we can always trim it down a bit if we don't like it showing through, but I think that will be fine. 
trim some of these pieces off. All right, so now we're going to stick this down into the middle. So liberal glue for this. So now we're just going to make sure that we get it. Yeah, that looks pretty good in the middle. Give it a good press down. The other thing we could do is taper those these bits down if we wanted, but no, I think that'll be fine. Still got to find something, could even do a bit more um, of the lace inside as well if we want to. But first we've got to stick these bits down. Beautiful. You can see the where I've ripped that off and that in the background there, but it actually looks kind of nice like zebra stripes, so I'm not too fussed about that. So then I'm gonna make sure we've got what we want where we want it. So again, this is pretty plain, but that means I can collage on this as well. I liked this one in the back with the little letter. So they'll be like that. So I might get them down next. Must have dirty fingers or something. down here is a bit dog eared and ratty so if I do stick some lace over that'll help um, hide that figure out where I want my holes I don't like it when there's only two signatures <laughs> it confuses me just debating which side I want to punch through to lacy side or material side easier to mark on here anyway so it was 2.4 wasn't it oh, so I thought it was yeah which would make it 1.2 for the middle um, so half would be 5.6 so I think if we do, yeah, six, six millimetres in from either side. And 
Now let's just have a look. If we put these over the holes, how close are they going to be? Because they are quite wide. Might work. We could move them out that way just a tad actually. Anyway, something like that will do. Let's just do it. And we're doing a big hole. Good luck to me. It goes. Is that close to? Yeah, let's do it like that. And. pokey tool. still need that don't I so now we can see if our eyelets will fit in just trim some of this mess that I've made with the fabric could have been worse I have no idea what the lace looks like oh that's not too bad goody goody and my eyelets are only slightly crooked well, the holes, these, this is down from that one. <laughs> these ones are pretty good. Well, that's going to look good. That worked all right by the looks. Sun should be cooking me tea again soon. I've done the last two nights. By cooking, I mean I bought some potato salad and sliced meats and cut up some salad. That's my effort level. That was nice though. Get so used to eating the hot meals in this weather. It's nice to have a salad every now and again. Okay. So that is great. They're not too bad. That looks pretty cool. So that's our cover. Pretty well ready, except for our lacy down here. Although, will it cover up this enough? Didn't even think about that beforehand, did I? No. Or other lace. I will just go and have a look what I've got. So I found this wide. Like a crocheted lace or whatever. So I'm actually going to cut a strip of that and I might even cut it in half, which will mess it up a bit, but that's all right. We only need a thin strip to go there and I think I can make that with just one piece of this. So if I cut it about here. Just a bit thicker and hides that bottom gray a little better than a thinner lace. So now I'm going to try and cut it down the middle. And then we'll 
got to decide rough edge up or rough edge down. I think rough edge up looks good. So I'm just going to put that on like that, I think. So I'll grab my Kmart glue again. baking paper I've got on there is getting a bit old I think I'll have to put some more on I just found when I first had this the lid stuck to it and it was too hard for me to get the lid off so I like putting the baking paper on I think it's a lot easier to get the lid on and off come out too easy at the moment I'm not sure why maybe we got some baking paper in there Feels really lumpy on them little eye bits at the top. Now let's just give it a bit of a pokey tool. easier now. Baking paper. And again, if any of those bits need sticking a bit more, I'll do that afterwards. I'll go around all the lace later when it's all completely dry and see if I need to add any more. That looks a lot better, doesn't it? It looks beautiful. I'm really happy with that as a cover. And as I said, there's room for me to play around and collage on these as well and add a label or something if I want. But I can have a bit of fun doing that another time. This shot's pretty good. And that looks nice and neat. So now we can tie our signatures in. Just hoping there should be plenty here, really. So what I'll do is just half this. I think I was going to, yeah, I might put that one in the front and this one in the back, because I think I like the birds with that. And the orange there goes with the butterfly nicely. So we will do one at a time. Thread that through there. Yeah, I think it's gonna be just right. Now to find a middle which is that one that we might swap out. Oh, 
it's back on the pages a bit. It's the only thing I don't like about this method and that's why I like to have the eyelet set a bit higher. So we won't do it too, too tight. That's another reason I like doing these um, separate so that I can adjust them easy. It's always good to leave a bit of extra just in case. It's not too bad. Needs a bit of tightening, but I'll worry about that afterwards. Get the next one in. So I've got a funny feeling this is used elastic too, so it's a, not as taut as it probably would be new. a bit loose but they're working all right so this is what we have we might as well do a flip through This one had mostly blue tones in it. And then this one had mostly pinkish tones. This was just a piece of a pattern page from a craft book that I've had hanging around for ages that I knew I wanted to use as a page somewhere, but I haven't found something to use it in yet. So it seemed to fit in here perfectly. Now these are great pages because they have these recipe cards that are perforated. So I'll be able to pull them out now and then if i stick something here it'll be like a window i'm thinking of doing something cool with that so actually having the elastics this little bit loose will probably be good because it'll be um, very easy for me to pull pages out when i want to work on them isn't that beautiful and colorful and I've got all these pages now that are ready for me to collage all over with other bits and pieces that I find in the books. I don't know if I'll be able to put anything on that one. That's just gorgeous the way it is. And then there's the back. So it's great to have that done. I'm so excited now when I'm sitting out watching TV at night. I can just go through the magazines and cut out little bits and plan some collaging on the pages. So I'll come back and show you when I've done a few pages or as I'm doing a few pages probably. So I hope that inspired you like it inspired me. And thank you so much to Crafty Dork and Nina Ribena for the inspiration. Um, yeah, great idea. So take care of yourselves, be good, and I'll see you again soon. Bye.